And people just don't care. They don't see it. Because they're ignorant. Some people don't even read the Bible. And say there's no God. I've read some of the Quran. I've read different religious books. I have. That's why if somebody from a Muslim person comes up to me and challenges me, I can at least respond. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. The only way. He said that Christ made that statement himself. He made that statement. He says, he is the Christ. Hallelujah. I'm so excited to be on this campus to tell you guys about Jesus. And if there is any Christians on this campus or any believers, don't be ashamed of your gospel. Don't be ashamed of Christ. You know, everybody else is not ashamed of what they are. So do not be ashamed if you're a believer. Let your friends know I'm a Christian. Be bold about it. Satan's people are bold about sin. I come up to you and say, you know what? I'm not straight. I'm gay. I don't nothing against gay people. But God hates the sin. Like he hates people who sleep around. He hates people who drink and overdosing drugs. He hates the sin. He loves his human family, but God hates the sin in your life. And that's what he's going to judge you about one day. You sin. Every time I'm about to sin or fall short, the Holy Spirit tells me, don't do that. Don't go there. And when I do fall short, I feel tormented. Why? Because it is God's Spirit in me telling me, Brother Howard, you shouldn't be saying that. You shouldn't be doing that. That's the difference from being born again. When you're born again, Christ comes into your heart. And he takes that stony heart and begins to mold it into something soft. So the people you used to hate, you don't hate no more. But bless you, young man. The lust, what you used to have, God starts to take those things away from you. Some things take longer than others, but God always completes his, 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 what he started in you. So I'm encouraging you guys. Listen, Jesus Christ is the only way. You know, some people are brought up in different religious sectors. I was brought up in a Christian home. I still went out and I've done my stuff in the world. And I ended up coming back to the faith. It's nothing what your parents tell you. Your parents can say to you, you know what? Believe in this, believe in that. But when you stand before God, you are going to stand alone. Your mom's not going to be there holding your hand. Neither is your father. You're going to stand before God alone. And have to be accountable for your life on planet Earth. Amen. My brother, you want to say something? Say something. Be a few words. Come on. This is your campus. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, your voice is so loud. I can follow you around. How much do you pay for this? How much do you pay for that? Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks for that? Where on Amazon? Yeah. Following you. Dude, your voice is so loud, man. Oh, it's, and my voice carries, man. Dude, your voice is crazy, man. I wish I had that kind of voice. Hey, Amen. Jesus is Lord. Jesus saved me from weed. He can save you, too. You know, I was failing most of my classes. Do wasn't doing so well because I was just so addicted to drugs and just, you know, just trying to party it up. But God saved me from that. And, and now I, I have that love. I have that love that I didn't have before. I have that love for God. I have that love for others, you know. And that's the thing that the world wants to take away is your love, your love for people. But Christ Jesus. tells us to, to serve others and to, to love others and, and to serve God, most importantly, to love God. And we can serve others and, and, and serve God through our actions by the way that we exemplify the characteristics of Christ, the way that we love others, the way we treat others. And now I have that love of God with me, and I want to go out there and, and share it to everyone. You know, because I didn't have that love. All I had was hatred for the world, you know, depressed, lonely. You see, we see this kind of incline in depression and loneliness over the past, last couple of, of years. And it's, it's because we have lost our faith in God, you know. We've lost our, our purpose in this world, right? The world tells us to get a, a nine-to-five job, and then we work, and then, you know, we want to party it up on the weekend because we have nothing else to look forward to. But I want to offer you all something else, something to look forward to that's, that's eternal. That will impact your soul. And that's, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. You know, I didn't think he was real. I didn't think that he actually existed, but, you know, he showed me. He showed me his love, and even in my dreams, I would see and have visions of Christ, you know, and we're made in the image of God. That's why, that's why Jesus Christ is Lord. That's why he's the way, the truth, and the life, right? People love to say my truth, and, and but the, real, the reality is that there's only one truth. There can't be multiple truth. There can't be multiple realities, right? And that reality is that Jesus is Lord, and he loves you so much, right? He loves you enough to take God's wrath upon himself, right? That's the purpose of the crucifixion was to take God's wrath, right? He didn't have to choose to take God's wrath. He could have, he could have been doomed for forever, our souls, right? Just like we feed our bodies with food and, 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 and our stomachs, so should we feed our souls, our spirit, you know, with the bread of life. The Bible, Jesus says, I am the bread of life, right? If you eat from the bread of life, you won't, you won't, you'll be satisfied and you won't ever need to eat again. Right, because we're all we're all feeding for something spiritual. We're all feeding for something that's not necessarily bread, right? But it's it's the word of God, it's the word of God that that satisfies in com, in, com, in completion. You know, when I was always high, I was always you know faded. I had that anxiety. I had that depression. I had that loneliness in my heart, that void in my heart, and I wanted to 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 make that heart uh, fulfilled through drugs or through women or through whatever. You know, that's why it's called the Holy Spirit because it makes your heart whole, All right? God just wants to repair your heart. He's the, the good surgeon that repairs our heart. And he loves us so much with everlasting love that even our parents, you know, our parents' love can't even compare to, you know, and that we're all searching for, for some, side of, some type of love. That's why we join fraternities. That's why we join sororities. That's why we join clubs and all that because we're all looking for something. We're all looking for a club. You know, we're all looking for a family that loves us. You know, maybe your family rejected you. Maybe your, you know, your family doesn't love you or whatever. You know, you, I was raised by a single mom, so I understand the pain, you know. There's so many broken families, uh, so many broken households, so many broken families. And the reason why is because the enemy, Satan, wants to attack uh, the family unit, most importantly. Because if he can destroy the family unit, then he can destroy people's opinions on God, you know. And, and we wonder why all these bad things happen to us. We wonder why, you know, why there's so much evil, right? so much chaos, so much, you know, disappointment. You know, people are, are starving every day and dying. You know, we ask ourselves, why would God allow this? But the reality is that we, we ourselves have allowed it. God gives us free will. You know, we're not robots. You know, we're not AI. But God gave us free will because he loves us. And the consequences of sin are, are, are death. Right, that's why we see all these wildfires, all these different things, and all these hurricanes coming against us. It's because God's wrath is, is coming at us, but that's why we have to repent and wake up and believe in Christ, believe in the gospel. If you don't have the gospel, you don't have no hope. You're going to trust in, in, in your own good works. And the Bible says that nobody is good, that we have all sinned. Every, the Bible says that all have fallen short of the glory of God. You know, we've all done something wrong with our lives, we all have messed up. We've all ruined our relationship. We've all, you know, you know, ruined our relationship with our parents, you know. And Christ just wants to re restore that. He wants to repair our broken hearts. And we have to entrust in him and, and follow him, right, until death. Because we see the world, we see all these, these microchips being put in people's hands, right? People are getting the mark of the beast already. And this is all in the Bible, y'all. Right, everything that was in the Bible is coming true, and you know I'm not preaching no dead religion. You can ask God Himself, and He'll speak to you. He'll speak to you. You know, we, we turn to idols, we turn to the things that we make by our hands. You know, the Bible says that a man, you know, uses wood to 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 make fire, and then he uses the same wood to make an idol, and then he bows down to that that wood idol. It doesn't make sense, you know. It doesn't make sense that we make an iPhone and then we worship that iPhone, right? You know, so we all believe in something, right? Whether you believe in science, whether you believe in, in, in Krishna or Buddha or, or, or whatever, but the Bible says that, that God is the spirit. And that's why we have to worship God in spirit and in truth. That's why we have to love him with all our heart, all our mind and all our strength. You know, because he, he loved us first. That's why we love him, right? The Bible says, yet we were sinners, yet we were disobedient to our parents, yet we were drug addicts, yet we were enslaved to... The, the sexual morality of yeah, we were enslaved to all these different things of the world.